ControlNet is one of the most powerful stable diffusion tools. There are many preprocessors to choose from, but today let's talk about depth. With depth, you can change image styles, copy poses, change a person's gender, modify material, create text effects, make up unique image compositions, and so much more. Let's break it down. By the way, if you want to know more about ControlNet and how to install it, check out my full ControlNet guide that I published on my blog, createxai.com. Link is in the description. So what is ControlNet Depth? ControlNet Depth is a preprocessor that estimates a basic depth map from the reference image. A depth map is a 2D grayscale representation of a 3D scene where each of the pixels values corresponds to the distance or depth of objects in the scene from the observer's viewpoint. Basically, when we look at the output, you will notice a grayscale. White is the closest to you, the viewer, and black is the furthest away, usually a background. You can clearly see it here with the figure being white. Some of it it has a grayscale gradient like the skin because the face is a little bit further than her leg. Then the leaves are slightly darker as they are behind her and black for the background. There are so many things you can do with control net, but let's look at a very simple workflow. This is just the basics and more interesting uses are coming up later. So pick your model. I use Drive Animated. Write a prompt. Choose your settings. And now open up the control net tab, drop your reference image, select enable and choose depth. If you want to see depth in action, check mark allow preview and run preprocessor, the exploding icon. Leave the other settings as they are for now and run. Notice how similar the images are, especially when it comes to face and composition. If you've seen my previous control net Kenny video, you would have noticed that the results there were quite different in every image. That's not really the case here. This makes the depth reprocessor incredibly effective in retaining spatial information from the reference image while reimagining certain parts in this new AI generation. Now let's talk about preprocessors. There are four depth preprocessors available for you to choose from in the drop-down menu. Depth Midas is the classic depth estimator that's used by default with a lower amount of detail. Depth Zoe is a preprocessor with a moderate level of detail. It's between Midas and Lires. Depth Lires has more details than the other two, and Depth Lires++ generates the most amount of detail. Notice how Depth Midas and Depth Lires++ have the sharpest object outlines in comparison with the other two. But is having more details always better? I'm not so sure. Let's say I wanted to change a few specific color choices from an AI generation I made. So I dropped the generated image into text to image so it has all of the same settings, prompts and parameters. But I made a change. From blue hair, I decided to choose pink hair and baseball cap becomes white baseball cap. The question is, which of these preprocessors can create the most close to the original generation with the changes I've made to the prompt? I'm using control net balanced in this case. And here are the results that showed up. Here's the depth map for Midas and the result. Zoe with the result, Lyris with the result, and Lyris++ plus plus with the result. You can see the gradual increase of details, with Midas being the lowest and Lyris++ plus plus the most. Just look at the leaves in the background. As you can see, more detail is not better in this case, as the closest to the original, with my changes included, is probably Midas depth. All right, but what if I wanted to make a significant change, a huge change, you know, like say, turn her into a boy. So let's test that. I changed the prompt from one girl to one boy and added a negative prompt, girl, woman. Once again, here are the results. Meet us, Zoe, Lires, 
and Lyris plus plus. Once again, we can see more detailed progression from left to right, but as to our goal of making a gender change, well, they all did pretty well. With my favorite being Midas and Zoe because Lyris and Lyris Plus Plus have a lot more detail in the clothing, in the background, something that I don't find that is needed in this image and just makes it look way more AI generated than the first two. So perhaps you should choose the depth preprocessor depending on how close to the original image you want the new one to be and on the intensity of details that you prefer. Now you might be wondering if you can use it with SD Excel models and the answer to that is yes. You just need to download any depth Excel model from Hugging Face, make sure to select it in the drop down and run your generations. For my SD Excel checkpoints, I currently use the Diffusers Excel depth mid but any from the link will do which link you might ask well all the information in this video is also published as an article on my blog creatixai.com this article is entirely dedicated to control net depth you can check it out if you'd like link is in the description and there you will also be able to find a link to download depth excel from hugging face and the same link will be present in the youtube description as you can see in the three examples i was able to use three different SDXL models with ControlNet for very different and beautiful results. Now let's talk a little bit about image to image. You can do so many things with it and ControlNet, but today I want to show you how to transform a picture you like into something else while keeping the same composition, maybe colors, definitely the outline. So we need to scroll down to the control net section in the image to image tab in automatic 1111 to use this powerful feature with other images. If you want to keep the same colors and only change the image slightly, then use a lower denoising strength. The higher the denoising strength, the less your reference image will impact the new image. If you want to use control net with the same image that you dropped into image to image tab, you won't need to upload it again inside control net, just check mark enable. Then change the prompt to whatever change you want to make and hit generate. For example, gold statue, paper statue. Here I'm using a reference image of a dog so I can change it to a bear, a cat, a bunny. I added all of these one at a time to the original prompt. I also used 0.9 denoising strength and 0.8 control net depth weight for most of the images shown on screen now. Though I had to lower the control net depth weight to 0.4 for the cat and the wolf to get pointy ears instead of the droopy dog ones. So playing around with the weight will have a big impact on how believable it changes in some cases. How cool are these results of using image to image with control net depth? I think these AI generations look absolutely stunning. Another powerful feature of using Using control net depth is to generate text. You can use it to create text based images that look like something other than the type text or fit nicely with a specific background. Here are some examples on the screen. You would just need to prepare a text file with whatever text that you want. After you've prepared your text files, you can go to text to image and do the usual settings. You know, write a prompt, pick the size, do all that stuff, and then drop in the text image inside control net and select all. In the preprocessor, choose invert and in the model, choose depth. So we're using depth a little bit differently here. The first prompt is pasta noodles on a white table and the second is pretzel on a marble table. And these are the results that you can achieve. Or here with a boo example with a little ghost. There's so much more you can do with text effects. There's a lot of tips, tricks and hacks that I'm sharing in my AI text effects video. Check it out in the pop up on the top right corner and it should also be in the YouTube description too. So if text is something you're interested in, I suggest looking into that video. You can also use control net depth to replicate specific 
poses. And while you do have the option to use open pose, it might not always work correctly or the way you wanted it to. So you could always try and do depth, you know? The process is exactly the same as before and you can use text to image or image to image depending on what you want to go for. So here we generated an image of a girl, all right? And now I'm going to drop in a different image to use as a reference for a pose. You can see what it looks like with the depth map. When we hit generate, we have a kind of a similar image to the one before with a pink background, white suit, everything, but the pose is now different. You can also use other tools like Magic Poser Web, for example, and pose a character however you want. Take a screenshot, drop it in, and use that as a reference. And that is a different option. Or you can use a photograph of somebody doing some action. You know, there's a website called Unsplash. It's one of the many with royalty-free photos. So I grabbed a photo from there and used the depth map from it to generate an image. And it looks pretty good, but there's a lot of things we can still fix. So you can always drop it into InPaint. And then for the control net, drop the original image. So when you're inpainting something like hands or feet, the information is still taken from the depth map from the original image, and it will just help you fix your AI generation that much better. And here is the final result. Another exciting thing you can use control net depth for is for some really unique compositions. So add some creativity to the mix and grab an image that you generated or a photo reference of something completely unrelated to what you want. You know, in this case, I found this building on Unsplash and I really love the composition in this photograph. I decided to use it as a starting point for a bunch of illustrations and let's see how it turned out. So I generated a bunch of like, you know, girls and gods and there's an eye and a broken mirror and a rocket ship. There's so many things that can be done with that, but they all have this like similar composition to the photograph, something that ControlNet probably wouldn't have done without this input. I suggest you give it a shot because you never know how it's going to turn out. And sometimes it's really fun to play with. Like when I used this photo of buildings and said that they're supposed to be bread. <laughs> the result is not some perfect masterpiece, but it was definitely fun to play with. If you use ControlNet Depth in some other way that I haven't mentioned here, I would love to hear from you. So let me know in the comments down below. By the way, I'm creating a whole playlist on ControlNet, even if it's going to take me a little bit of time. Please be patient with me. This is not my full time job. I just really enjoy exploring AI worlds and learning together with you. Other than that, thank you so much for watching this video. And hey, if you're still here, check out this one next. By the way, to all of those who say that my voice sounds like AI, I don't know if I should take it as a compliment, but I can promise you that this is my voice. Though I suppose if I wrote it in an AI voice generator, AI could say the same thing. So it's up to you to decide. Till next time. Bye.